Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to this video where we're going to be focusing on the effect of evidence questions in understanding arguments. So with these questions, you'll be assessed on how well you're able to judge whether information presented weakens or strengthens an argument that is being made. You need to be able to understand what the aim of a passage is and measure how well a piece of evidence helps to add to the case of it being presented or whether it lessens it. Okay. Now, I always recommend one method for answering these questions, and that is the if it were true test. The best method for deciding if something strengthens or weakens a theory is to use this test. You should ask yourself, if, for example, statement A, statement B was true, would it strengthen or weaken the argument? Okay, let's have a look at some examples. So, you don't actually have a go at this yourself. Try and do it by pausing the video. So, the answer you should have gotten is C. Two and three are what is what would strengthen the author's argument. So, first of all, as always, establish the main conclusion and its premises, okay? So the main conclusion here is that Requiem was composed between 1960 and 1971. One premise is that Trumpet was discovered in 1960. Another premise is that the recording equipment was not used in 1971. Next, we look at each statement one by one and use the if it were true test. So, statement one is most of the song required use of the trumpet. So, we use the if it were true test. So we say, we find out if it is more, less, or no more or less likely that Requiem was composed between 1960 and 1971, if it were true that most of the song required, used, required use of the trumpet, as the trumpet was discovered in 1960. In fact, it is no more or less likely that Requiem was composed between these dates. This is because the fact that most of the song used the trumpet does not add to the case because he could have started composing before 1960 and then added in the bits that require the trumpet after. This therefore does not strengthen the argument. Statement two. Okay, so use the same sort of thing. We have to find out if it's more, less, or no more or less likely that Requiem was composed between 1960 and 1971. If it were true, that no stock of the recording equipment existed after 1971. So, the fact that no stock of the recording equipment existed after 1971 means that it is very unlikely that he recorded after 1971. Therefore, it's more likely that Requiem was composed between these dates if there was no stock of the recording equipment after it, because he had to use it, right? And if there's no stock of it after 1971, it must mean that he had to have done it whilst there was stock. This therefore does strengthen the argument. Now, looking at statement three, the trumpet part of the song was one of the first he recorded. So the same sort of thing, find out if it's more, less or no more or less likely that Requiem was composed between 1960 and 1971 if it were true that the trumpet part of the song was one of the first he recorded. Well, if it was one of the first parts of the song he recorded, then it adds to the writer's case that it was recorded within those time frames. It is therefore more likely that Requiem was composed between these dates. Okay, And because it's more likely, it's therefore strengthening the argument. Okay. So this is also stronger than the argument, in addition to two. Therefore, the answer is C. Now, as well as strengthening argument questions, the same can be applied for weakening argument questions. Try and use the if it were true test for this question. Before, we were looking for things that made it more likely for the conclusion to be supported, but now it has to be less likely. Okay? So pause the video now and have a go. So the answer you should have gotten is A. These 20 studies took place at one workplace. 
So, as always, aim to establish the conclusion and its premises. The conclusion is that the yerkes dodson law is the most accurate measure between arousal and performance. One premise is that it is illustrated well graphically, and another premise is that 20 studies have shown accuracy of the graph. So firstly, it's a good idea to rule out some options based on whether they relate to undermining the conclusion. As there are five options and we are using the process of elimination, the if it were true test will actually take up a lot of time. Okay, We should rule out some options based on the argument presented and common sense, so to see if they undermine the argument. So we can rule out B because the fact that there are alternate ways to measure arousal and performance doesn't affect the fact that Yerkes Dodson may be the most accurate. We can rule out C, as the fact that it is constantly investigated does not weaken the argument of it being the most accurate measure. We can rule out D, as the point at which people reach arousal does not affect whether the test is the most accurate. We can rule out E, as the fact that there are other ways to illustrate the Yerkes Dodson law does not necessarily undermine the argument, okay? Because at the end of the day, the argument is that the Yerkes Dodson law is the most accurate measure, and the fact that there are other ways to illustrate it doesn't necessarily undermine it. So just by using the process of elimination, we, we're left with A. So, these 20 studies took place at one workplace, so that if that was true, then it would mean that, you know, the statistics aren't really reliable because it's a very, very small sample size. Therefore, here, the answer is actually A. Okay? So this shows that sometimes just using logical reasoning can also help us reach the correct answer. And I know I did say at the beginning of the video, use the if it were true test, okay? Because I want you to really, really understand how to get the question using a formal formulaic view that I have displayed to you. But in a short amount of time, there may not be enough time to use this formula that I have taught you. So a backup is using logical reasoning. Okay? In the next videos, we'll look at some examples now to try and support the theory we've learned in this video. Thank you for watching this free BMAT tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock the rest of the 100 tutorials and all 8 ebooks, click here now.